Welcome back. Yes, last time Steph Gilmore was competing at Honolulu Bay, it was 2007, and she won the event and the world title that year. This year, though, I don't think it's going to be as easy. Sally Fitzgibbons and Tyler Wright are proven performers on long-running right-handers, and they're ready to throw everything they have at the five-time world champ. We spoke exclusively to the contenders before they split to Maui. The Women's World Tour arrives at its final destination with three Australians as the only surfers capable of winning the 2014 world title. Stephanie Gilmore, Sally Fitzgibbons and Tyler Wright are set to wage civil war at the target Maui Pro. The Australian girls have always been strong. We've always had a high number on the tour. We all have such a great respect for each other, but we all want to win. We all want to be the female surfing star of, of Australia. You know, I've had so many battles with both surfers, both with uh, Steph, we've had a number of title races and, and she's got the better of me. And, then, and Tyler, we've had some, some great heats, especially over this season. You know, I wasn't really in it at the start of the year. You know, I didn't have a, a lot of fantastic results and I only won my first event halfway through. So I've kind of, you know, come back at the end. You're winner! <laughs> Something that female surfing has been missing for a while is those those rivalries and and um, and now they're rich. I respect Steph, and still she's one of my idols. As I've gotten older, though, I've just learned how to compete against you know people that I respect, and um, it's kind of sick. <laughs> it's super fun too. Sally Fitzgibbons has rarely been out of world title talk since she qualified for the tour in 2009. With a string of runner-up finishes, she's more determined than ever to win her first world title. Sally Fitzgibbons is probably the most um, driven and determined and disciplined professional surfer that you've ever met. But when I surf against Sally, I always just, you know, I, I try beyond my hardest to, to want to win. I, I've never had anyone have to, to push me because it's all this internal voice knowing that, um, yeah, I, I want to be great in this sport. I want to leave my mark and have these, these titles to my name. The best surfers, the best athletes are the ones who can deal with, with the pressure and figure out a way to use it to their benefit. I'm very competitive, naturally, anyway, so, and that's in anything. So when I paddle out into a heat and the pressure's on, it's like I'm a complete nervous wreck, but somehow I like to just switch that into a drive and, and a want to, to win. Tyler Wright became surfing's next big thing when she claimed her first pro victory at 14. Growing up in the spotlight of the world tour, by her late teens, Tyler felt drained and even talked of walking away. But a change of attitude helped her rediscover the fun and with it, success. So over the last two years, it's been a work in progress to figure out kind of what I want to do and, you know, how I want to do it. And, you know, I've kind of just come to the conclusion that I just don't want to do it my way and have fun and just enjoy it. Put in so much emphasis on an end result and just kind of never really worked out for me. <laughs> so, um, and I didn't like who I was becoming when I was trying to do that too. You know, I don't see, for me, myself now, putting much, so much worth into something so, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it doesn't hold a lot of value um, for me. But what does is just what I learn and what I, you know, just discover along the way. I think that's so much more valuable to me than anything else. Sally is Tyler's antithesis. Openly determined, she won't stop trying until she wins that elusive world title. The world title race, I think it being my ultimate goal, it's something that from an eight-year-old I, I said to myself I was going to be an Olympic gold medalist or a world champion and, and I wasn't going to stop until I got that. So I think to win a world title, it's, it's not just me raising, you know, a cup. It's probably, you know, it would be the, the heaviest cup I ever lifted because, you know, I've had a countless amount of, uh, you know, tries and opportunities and, and just fallen short. And I feel that everyone sort of love and and cheers and um, kind of emotion that they're poured into me, that all goes into this big cup. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise it with, yeah, with a lot of pride and know that, um, yeah, that, that I've made what I set out as an eight-year-old to do, I've made it come true. 
Steph not only takes the experience of five world titles to Maui, but also a slight ratings lead. For me, I have that experience up my sleeve, and that's something that I'll use. Um, just that knowledge of how to control your emotions and, and how to just be in that moment and really embrace it. But I enjoy winning world titles. I, I, I enjoy surfing. Um, I love performing. Getting to the end and holding up the trophy, that's not what I love the most. It's the moments through the event, through the year, um, surfing great waves, getting high scores. Like It's, it's a, a real culmination of so many different elements that come together and then to win at the end is, it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's such a cool feeling and it's draining, but it's, um, yeah, it's one of the best feelings ever. So I'd love to win again. Props to the production team there. Great insights on our title contenders. Barton, I wanted to get your thoughts. Sally Fitzgibbons talking about the weight of that trophy if she's able to hoist it up. It kind of makes me feel a little bit anxious and a little bit yeah. worried for it. Does she want it too bad? And we, well, maybe, you know, and I think we've all been guilty of that in our careers. At some point, you learn how to deal with it. It's nice to hear them talk about the need to control emotion and, and the level of understanding and intellect of those mm. young women is the impressive thing. The surfing's amazing, but you listen to them talk and how well they understand it themselves mm. and what they've got to do to achieve the result. Mm. And, you know, they're on the right track for sure. Tom, uh, Sally, you, you can sort of sense that, that desperation mm. to claim that title. Steph... On the other hand, I've got to say, seems so relaxed mm. and just so calculated in, in answering all those questions then. She's dangerous right now. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's put it, put it mildly. Yeah. This is exactly how Steph gets her best performances out when she's relaxed. And we all do that way, uh, do it that way. But for Steph, she's more cat-like than anyone else. He, she really wants that. She wants it. She loves the idea of being in Honolulu Bay. She's won there before. She's sniffing it out. She smells it real clearly, you know. It's a strong scent of world title to me. The other contender in the mix, oh, Tyler Wright, she, she just seems like she's found her formula. You know, everyone's got a different way of doing it. She's just having fun. Absolutely, Ronnie. I mean, if Tyler was closer, I'd be kind of picking Tyler. You know, she's got that power. She's so powerful. That's what the judges love to see. You know, she's got a long shot. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Steph, you know, grew up on right-hand point breaks at Snapper. I think she's going to be hard to beat, but I'd love to see Tyler get involved in the mix if, if she can get a great result. See it live in HD for the first time ever on Fox Sports.